It's okay. It's okay. I can smell the coffee. Yeah, the coffee is gonna make it poured out. I can oh. smell the coffee. Oh, that's how she's seeing chat. That makes sense. <laughs> okay, so, because it looks like we're going to just essentially keep giving these away. I have a whole bunch of planets for y'all. Um, yes, I remember she's a lefty. So one girl, whenever you're ready to call into Zoom, feel free to call into Zoom and we'll, we'll do our thing. Um, but so... It's hard. The camera doesn't pick these up too, too well. So the planets are, I don't know, they fit in the palm of my hand. And they all have streaks of color. Like this one in particular has reds and kind of a silver. But mostly on camera you can see the red and the white. Um, there's some greens. Some of these are kind of trippy looking. Um, there is indeed a rainbow planet. I know it's blue screening out, but there is totally a rainbow planet. And another special planet we have. Do, 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 as soon as I find it. Also, we only have like one yellow. I think it's pretty cool. So if you like yellow. And where is it? Oh, of course it's on the very bottom of the stack. And of course there's one with the starfish. So, those are like the three unique ones. A lot of the others, mostly colors that go well together. So you have some like blues. Oh, this is going to green screen out, isn't it? Look at me. Note to self, don't put the blues up. You have ones that, oh, uh, this one's kind of showing up all right. White and all this other thing. So if I pester you about colors, like literally if you tell me a color... I will do my best to pick something. So, uh, was I a casino dealer in a past life? No, but fun fact, um, the uh, planetarium I worked at, we have a limited number of seats, but we're also free, so we don't sell tickets. So to keep track of when we were quote sold out for a show we actually we actually got tokens and the tokens just happened to be plain uh poker chips and i had a hand in both uh ordering them and being like this is what they're gonna be and they're really cool i don't have any of them with me but they're we have three different tokens and they're in primary colors so we have red yellow blue and that was in case somebody was colorblind um, and on one side, it, like, I think it's the red one will say show one, either the blue or the yellow says show two, and the other one says show three. So I tried my best to make them as easy to tell apart as possible. So, yeah. Yeah. So I was asking, I think I was after, I don't remember who I was asking who, who wanted the thing, but yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, I, not only did I have a part in ordering them and designing them, I also had to hand them in and out and they're, these are just about the right size, uh, cause that's just when we knew the things were done. So I don't think I was a poker, poker dealer or casino worker, but that's probably why I handle these like poker chips. Cause to me, they are about like poker chips. So Hello, favorite human. You're in trouble now. Are you going to say anything? The microphone probably won't pick you up. <laughs> so, for those of you that have been longtime viewers, we had a bit goal set up for that at a certain point, favorite face, there would be a face reveal of favorite humans. It wasn't until tonight that I realized that that bit goal wasn't actually keeping up with all the bits that had been donated during the Hangout-a-thon. So he's doing this oh well shrug thing, but um, uh, I think I think it's at least half your face, honey. He, he's just nodding his head. You don't even want to like come and like stand behind me? This doesn't count as a face reveal. Come look at these planets. They're pretty. Come on. What was the number? Um, 
there's no camera there. That's just lights. That one's not on the screen. Um, it was the last number before I realized it wasn't updating was like 40, 43,906. And when I did the math, it's about half of his face. No, come on. It has to be that one. So here's favorite human. This is not technically a face reveal. Now look, look at these. Look at these planets. Aren't these gorgeous? Aren't these gorgeous? Really? Really? I like... Do you think my sister would like this one? It's the rainbow one. Favorite forearm. We've seen that hand before. They're cheering for you in chat. They're like, yes, show favorite human. Human, human, human. Not going to lie. I was with uh, my sister in law and he called and favorite human has at least one arm. Yeah, he has at least one arm. Um <laughs> and uh I answered the phone, I was like, Hello human and uh my sister in law was highly amused by this. Ooh Yeah. Uh F H equals floppy hand. I mean, I don't know. Is it floppy hand? Floppy, 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 floppy. So what's going on with uh, with One Girl, Two Beakers? Did she do everything capitalized correctly? I, I don't know. I... Does she, did she not, did we forget to tell her that she had to have Zoom? Uh... Where are you going? No, 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 where are you going? You're not allowed to run away. Did, does she not just put that link into a browser? She puts it into the browser. Did you capitalize the star, the strider? Oh, she's downloading. Oh, okay. Uh, that's fair. We had to do that with Walker. So Walker, Walker, you want to call in and so we can make sure you're all alive and stuff while we wait? He may actually be playing a game. Walker did say, Walker earlier, and you missed it. Oh, Miss Town said, sure. Yeah, call in. Miss Town earlier, Walker earlier ate one of these on camera because he set his limit for 5,000. Darling, it terrified me. It terrified me. I, I was like, I don't I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> See now he laughs. Now he laughs. Where are you going? You're 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 going away. You're going away. You're not allowed to go. Um and you are conveniently wearing a blue shirt in front of a blue screen. Mm. Look at it on the on that monitor. It's kinda of funny looking. It is kind of funny looking. Good night. I don't know who's going good night, but good night. Yeah, favorite human is totally cackling. Uh, fa we, we, yeah, yeah, I know, right? We're having Walker call in, in theory. I'm waiting for Walker to connect because uh, one girl, two beakers. I think, I think her name is really Amanda. There's Walker and Amanda. Oh, wow, there's a lot of things happening. So <laughs> they both figured it out at once. All right, there's Walker on the top. I don't, I don't know. I can't, I should probably put on the earphones so I can hear you, huh? How do I, how do I, how do I, how do I do any of this? Okay. All right, how are you feeling, Walker? Well, uh, my gut's a little, eh, uh, but otherwise I'm okay. Okay, so you've survived. I have survived. Uh, barely. <laughs> barely. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. I mean, technically, I, I don't know if it's late enough for me even. No. Yeah. Wait. Go on. No. Go on. No. Do you want to try it, human? Uh, the cost of me trying one of those would be a four pack of. Worldwide stouts. <laughs> That's cheap. Oh, he's cheap. He's cheap. Um, but is it? Oh, I was like, what is going on? One one girl, two beakers is like, wait, what am I doing? All right, so Amanda, you Time need time for me to bail. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Walker. Yep. All right, so Amanda, I'm wait, assuming you can end. hear me. You have to hang up, Walker. Hit, yeah, I know. I'm remembering. There it is. Hit, yeah, hit <laughs> leave. Okay, so there's one girl, two beakers. It shows that you're muted, so you need to unmute yourself, and you need to um, 
Oh no, you're so bad at technology. <laughs> okay, you're not muted anymore. Can you talk? Okay, I'm unmuted. Yay, you're, okay. you're unmuted. Oh, Sorry. look, you're here. Oh. Um, but I have this sort of thing where I have a microphone, whereas if I plug in my microphone, it will like stop uh, my speakers. So you guys have to tolerate a really bad speaker system. So my sincerest apologies. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. You made it. Ugh, I'm so sorry for canceling. And sorry. It's okay um, if you're if you're not feeling up to it. You can yeah. still you can still go. You can still bail. No, no, it's okay. I had an Advil. I've had a nap. I've cuddled my dog, so I'm feeling much better now. So. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So you missed it. I, this is the arm of favorite human, my fiance. Oh, hello, arm of favorite human. <laughs> There's an Why ongoing. Why do you hidden away? Like it's he's like a quarter of a human. <laughs> Get over here. There we go. Um, the, the the running gag is that his face is never on on screen. So we actually have a bit goal. Of one hundred thousand bits, right, Pamela? Yeah. One hundred. That's ambitious. Bits. Ambitious. He should lower it in the name of science. He, no, or... I've actually talked him into revealing half of his face. Just half. Just half. <laughs> the good know. half or the bad half? Which I half? Don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I told him he could just do his eyes or just his mouth. He could pick the half. <laughs> or can like strategically place it so the microphone is right in the way. <laughs> this can be done. This can be done. When do you want to do that, <laughs> favorite human? <laughs> He's shrugging off camera. <laughs> it's glorious. I'm really sorry. I'm getting confused. I'm watching it on Twitch right now, and it has a massive delay. Yes. Um, so I'm not Twitch. sure if I should watch it in the Zoom. Yeah, just watch everything okay, in the Zoom. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, Twitch. that was way really better. I yes. was like... Yeah. Oh, I can see, like, your whole setup. This is so cool. I know, right? <laughs> and I love, have you noticed that he has, the, with the green screen, he has, like, this kind of, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's wearing, like, a net of some kind. <laughs> I know. His shirt ended up being a net. You can't see stars. that on the stream, can you? Say again? You can't no. see that on the stream. No, no. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, my gosh. You guys, on the stream, you are missing out. It's, it's on the behind the scene, behind the scene action. That's really funny. It's hilarious. So, do you still have Carl? No. <laughs> so there was a um, release Carl donation goal that I didn't start, um, <laughs> but I am kind of excited to happen because it was kind of getting strange to keep a cockroach in my apartment. Uh, I'm sure there's like laws for like infestation and whatnot against that. So it works in my favor. I was able to gain a little bit of money to run some more experiments. Uh, and I was able to get the cockroach out of my house. Okay. So <laughs> it was really nice. Um, but yeah, it was probably one of the weirder things that I've done, but it's okay. It's a cockroach. Um, <laughs> when I was going to release, release him, like the whole thing was that I was supposed to tie like a string to him and take him for a walk. So I put him in the freezer, uh, but I forgot about him in the freezer and he was in there for like an hour or something. And I pulled him out and, you know, he's like flipped on his back with all of his legs in the air. Uh, and so I thought I had killed this cockroach. And that's really embarrassing when you're going on stream. Um, because, first of all, it's bizarre to have a cockroach. Second of all, it's even more bizarre to keep a cockroach in your freezer and then freeze it and then show it on stream. But anyways, he came back to life, uh, which is also very creepy, which is probably why <laughs> Toronto has such an infestation, even though it's dropping to like minus 30 in the winter. Um, so cockroaches basically don't die. Um, but the interesting thing about it is that I started to like look into cockroaches and whatnot on the internet because we were trying to figure out like of the cockroach, whether Carl was actually a girl or a boy. Mm -hmm. Uh, none of us were really, uh, qualified enough to figure that out, but there are actually studies on people trying to replicate, uh, the tensile strength of like the different cockroach shells and studying different cockroaches or different species because apparently different species have different strengths um, in like hardness and you know, like all of the other related things that I don't know so much about, um, which is interesting because uh, there's PhD students of all kinds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, so wait, I, the textile strength know. is literally how how much force it takes to squish a cockroach? Uh, Am I understanding yeah, or, that I correctly? In your case, they were pulling it until break. So, oh, God! Oh, that's yeah. so much worse. So there's like, well, it's kind of interesting because they have like this really unique exoskeleton, which is built up of like chitin, which is basically like sugar molecules, right? So right. it's like polymer. Um, right now, scientists, so this is actually this field of research that I'm going into with cellulose nanocrystals. Um, so we can take like these different polysaccharides and study their different tensile strengths to develop new materials. And so um, the chitin and the way it arranges in the cockroach, uh, I guess it adds to its mechanical strengths. So um, yeah, there's people, you know, they look into like lobsters or they can look into like beetles and because like with lobsters and beetles, the cuticle, um, packs in like this chiral pneumatic phase, which is specifically what I'm studying, but right. with like, crystals. Um, so I guess with cockroaches, it's another unique like packing structure. So I don't know. <laughs> There's a really like all different kinds of like research, which is kind of entertaining. I don't know, it's fun. <laughs> it is entertaining. I, I couldn't <laughs> imagine being the PhD student, like harvesting all of these different like cockroaches and killing them and then mutilating them in the name so, of science. So but. <laughs> that I can imagine doing, but can you imagine filling out the IRB paperwork oh my related goodness. to this? Yeah. How do you explain that? I guess you would say biomimicry. You know, um, right now in the sciences, there's this really big thing going on where we're trying to like mimic different biological properties. So I feel like if you threw the word biomimicry into your proposal, I feel like it could slide. So we're going to pause right here. We're going to try to explain to everybody who's not in academia, WTF and IRB is. So you can't just go and do experiments on people or mice or cockroaches without going to an ethics board. This can be anything from oh, I want to look at students' grades over time to I want to tear apart cockroaches. <laughs> There's actual training for this, and there are things that have to be met, including informed consent. And, I mean, the informed consent part is for humans. You can't get informed consent from cockroaches. <laughs> so just to put this in. <laughs> In perspective, like that's my overall view because I haven't had to do IRB stuff for much of anything other than to say I have had the training. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you can't. I, know, I guess like if consent. you're looking at like different medicines, it's easy to make the argument if you're testing medicines in mice and whatnot, you know? Right. But right. yeah, to crush cockroaches for the sake of building a new material is so, like a little. I don't know. That's bordering on something quite eerie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a little eerie, but I, I feel like most people would rather see cockroaches torn apart than, oh you know, a dog torn apart. True. <sighs> okay. Since we totally skipped the introduction part and oh, yeah, we just started sorry. talking about Carl and cockroaches and everything, would you like to take a moment to introduce yourself? Sure. Okay. Um, so I don't know. I feel weird because my camera is here and my laptop is here. So I'm like trying it's, to figure out it's, where to look. It's okay. Um, so the camera is um, here and the monitor is there and there's a computer here. So I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> okay. Um, so hello, everybody. My name is Amanda. Uh, on Twitch, I go by one girl, two beakers. Uh, so basically, I am a PhD chemistry student uh, here in Toronto. Uh, so I'm in my second year of PhD. And basically what I am studying is uh, the chiral pneumatic phases formed by cellulose nanocrystals. Um, so basically cellulose nanocrystals are these nanoparticles that we can get if we take wood pulp and we dissolve it down in acid into a period of time where basically you dissolve the cellulose down into these crystalline structures. Uh, because we are dissolving it down in an acid, sulfuric acid, it's left with this charged functional group, which gives it this like stability. So basically it has these propulsions, which allows the cholesterol phase to form. So basically, uh, as I've explained it many times on stream, I feel like there's a few of you who have heard this whole spiel. So bear with me. So you get these nanoparticles that are floating in, or in your uh, colloidally stable solution or mixture, and they kind of land on the bottom and all in the same alignment. 
and then your second one will kind of land on top. But to minimize energy, as you all know, because you've suffered through chemistry at some point in your life, we always want to minimize energy. So they have this slight shift. And then the next layer will, layer will land on top and it shifts. And it just is like this consecutive, I don't know, I'm trying to mimic a, this chiral phase. So it's a, like, like a, a sterile <laughs> st uh, yeah. spiral staircase going up. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so there's two cool things about this. Uh, firstly, if you evaporate the water away in the space, it will actually maintain that chiral nomadic phase, we call it. So that's chiral staircase structure. Um, the, the two unique things about that is that first, it this the distance between each of those phases is on the order of magnitude of visible light. So that means that when your visible light is hitting it, the color is reflected and we can control how that color is, uh, what color that is based on the distance of what we call the pitch. So that one rotation. So we can go, depending on what they use, it can go from UV uh, all the way to IR light, so mm -hmm. infrared, um, but normally it's blue. Um, and so the second cool thing about that is because it has this chiral rotation in the uh, left axis, when light is hit on it or polarized light, it actually reflects left hand polarized light. Um, so this exact structure we see, and I'm gonna bust out my cool little collection because this is my favorite thing ever. And I feel like I'm constantly showing out my beetles on stream. So oh no, yeah, show off actually, the beetles, show off the beetles. It's amazing. I don't know if it goes into focus. So basically um, the first thing that comes to mind for this is your beetles. So this is a jewel beetle. It has this beautiful blue structure. If you were to put it under a, a scanning electron microscope and break it into pieces, you would actually see it has the exact same spiral staircase structure. And so again, the color of the beetle uh, is the color of the distance of each pitch. So I also have like blue ones. I have like a whole collection of like these different ones. They're all still kind of like wrapped up. Unfortunately, <laughs> I broke the head off of this guy, but oh, this no. is a like, purple one. Um, and so when I was we talking- adore about, you, by the way. <laughs> so um, that, that spinning structure is really important for the mechanical strength. And then obviously like other signaling properties between different beetles. I don't know. I guess they can talk to each other somehow. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't specialize in beetle structures. Um, but the really cool thing about this is like, you can see this is clearly a dead beetle. You know? Right. You take like a flower, which has like beautiful pigments and stuff that's green. The colors all fade away. That's because those are made with organic pigments, whereas this is structural color. So this color will basically maintain as long as we can imagine. So, this became, excuse me, I'm like drooling because I'm getting so excited as I'm speaking about it. <laughs> this became okay. like more important about 25 years ago, it was discovered that they form this chiral nomadic phase. Mm -hmm. But about, I believe it was about five years ago, Sylvia Vignolini from Cambridge University uh, went to, uh, what is a big natural sciences museum in, in England? The British Museum. The British, the British Museum, Museum is what I'm yeah, being told. So they had these berry specimens that I can't exactly remember the name of it. So they're these purpley blue berries. Um, and they had been storing them in their exhibit for 50, 60 years. And they still maintain the color. And she actually did the study on the structural color of those berries that they had. And they're like really beautiful iridescent you know like it's i don't know it's super fantastic that if you can find the shape and you can control control the structure that you can maintain this coloring so um the research has like really been exploding in the past years because we're always trying to develop new materials with different strengths and whatnot mm -hmm. but now if you can add them as like sensing systems for different properties so like pH sensors or humidity sensors because of the, the change in the pitch, mm -hmm. uh, that would be really unique. Uh, also, a lot of people are working on different like films that you can put on windows to absorb the IR radiation or reflect it back um, in terms of like heating and cooling your house. So yeah, there's lots of like really unique things to do with structural color. Um, and I noticed in, in the comments, Schmidt said something about the birds, feathers are structural color. Yeah. So we see this in plants, we see it in bird feathers, 
Uh, we see it in a lot of different places in science, but it's really like a unique biological property, property um, which is kind of exciting because it's like now it's really newly uh, being researched. Um, because as you know, pigments don't usually last. So if we can find a way to put a coloring on something and keep that coloring, it's kind of remarkable. Like imagine having cars painted like beautiful colors of iridescence and like not having to worry about, I don't know, so the color fading. I guess you would, it would suck to get a paint job. <laughs> yeah, it would be expensive. <laughs> Just don't stop it. <laughs> this is Pamela sneaking in from off camera. Yeah, um, so, so first of all, I want to thank oh, our. Shoot, shoot, shoot! I what? accidentally hit roll ad. I am so sorry. That's oh, okay. No. For money, it's all about the donations. If they're not donating, they're giving your ad watches. <laughs> so, I'm um, so sorry. You know, subs, you get to hear this question, um, <laughs> and you get to think about the answer. So, so one of the things that that I learned uh, back in two thousand was that beetle. Uh, shells reflect polarized light in really funky ways. Yeah. And I'd love to know how polarization and chirality may be linked to one another. And do they look different in UV light the way flowers look different in UV light? I love bugs. I, I, yeah. I am not a fan of tearing them apart. However, that made my stomach <laughs> squee and I left the room temporarily. Uh, how long do we have left on the ad? Uh, the ad is one second over, so... Okay. Um, somebody says, missed the off-comment remark because the ad started playing. Yeah, that was totally my my fault. Uh, but uh, Amanda was about to answer the, the <laughs> question, so I'll let her do that. Has it started again already? Yeah, it's, it's over. Okay, so I have to be honest. I am new to photonics, so I am not exactly 100% sure if I'm going to give you the correct answer. And this is why I love Twitch so much is because usually there's someone in the audience or watching that has the answer. So if know, someone can give the awesome? answer faster than me and I can read your answer, that would be great. Uh, otherwise, um, so if I am to reword your question to make sure that I understand it properly, you're asking about... Um, the way polarized light is interacting with different types of light, so UV light, I understand. So, so like, if I, I... I was a bad person and asked a two-part question. Part okay. one is, do beetles have remarkably different markings or visibility when you look at them under different types of polarizers and do they look different when you shine ultraviolet light on them the the way flowers look different in ultraviolet so with a lot of species that's like a that's a so two parts of your answer um yes and yes uh, so not only are they colored a lot of times so i'm actually opening another specimen here so usually a lot of species that have this structural color also have different pigments. So I believe birds specifically, they'll have different pigments in their feathers along with the structural color. So in that case, if you were to shine certain feathers under UV light, you would see the different pigments. Uh, and for anyone who isn't really aware of what I mean by pigments in UV light, what happens is if you have these pigments which have a lot of conjugation, uh, you're basically exciting them and they're, they're, they're emitting fluorescence. So um, I have here a beetle. So this beetle is known, I can't even remember what it's called. If anyone knows what it's called, feel free to shut it up. So this little guy has been recreated by Japanese scientists. Uh, I wish I knew the paper offhand. Um, and so the unique thing about this one is that this one specifically is known to have different pigments and structural color. Uh, and so what happens is if you were to shine, oh, I'm breaking off his poor little feet and everything. This poor guy, I'm like mutilating him as I'm trying to pick him up. Oh my God. So um, uh, under polarized light, you would see basically um, whether it's being reflected or uh, suppressed, you would see black regions or you would see color regions. So usually what we do is we put it under like a polarizing filter or a cross polarizer to see um, what is happening with the polarization. So you would see um, reflectance. And usually when polarized light is reflected back, it's not usually reflected back with a color, it's reflected back with a handedness. 
Uh, so how we would see that would actually be with a uh, studies called circular dichroism. Um, and then if you're using the polarizer, like I said, it's either it's light or it's dark. There's not really much change. Uh, and then if you were to look under it under UV or look at it under UV light, uh, you would see actually where the conjugation or the conjugated um, pigments are. Uh, with the jewel beetles, however, I believe their color is strictly based on uh, polarized light and, or sorry, on structural color. So basically if you put this under like a left-handed polarizer, uh, you it would just turn black. And if you put it under a right-handed, I think it turns something like a blue color or something. I can't, I can't remember exactly, or maybe it's like a yellow. Um, but then it does lose its iridescence underneath the polarizer. Um, so yeah. That's my that's my little thing. So I hope I answered your question. I hope I answered it correctly. I would feel really bad if I like slipped some errors in there. But I feel like if I said something like outrageously wrong, someone would call me out. And you'd be like, like no, that's not how that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Hanny wants to know, could these structural colors be used for an invisibility cloak? These are the real questions. <laughs> um how uh how would they be in how would i'm trying know. to think of a, i'm trying to think of an intelligent answer um it's okay if the answer that is isn't a straight out no um how so okay do you mean like a mirror you're trying to like, i never really thought about so it. have you seen harry potter you guys don't hate me please oh. don't Oh, it's oh. okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, I love you. All right. So, I'm so embarrassed. So I know this is the most embarrassing moment of my Twitch life right it's, now. It's okay. But anyway, so in Harry Potter, uh, the brief version is that Harry, the main character of the earlier books and movies and stuff, was given an invisibility cloak, and when he put it on, it you could not see him. It was like he was invisible. So mm -hmm. I think what Hanny is asking is, could this be used for like that kind of invisible technology? No, because don't you have to see through it? You would have to see through. Yeah, see through. I it. think I said I saw someone say something really smart sounding, like bending light so it bends with the environment. Right, because I think right now there's like a riot control shield that bends light around, so like. You can tell that something is there, but you can't necessarily tell that it's a That's human. That's so cool. I know. I imagine it would have something to do with, like, structural properties. Right. Um, but I I imagine it's, like, the same idea. Like, they're following the same logic. Right. So, That's what it's, hey, sometimes the thing. Um, Hanny follows up with, I keep on hearing about invisibility cloaks in different wavelengths. So, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. That technology just sounds really well, complicated. Like if it's invisible, you would have to like see through it. And not only if it's a cloak, it would have to be like a very malleable material. Right. So I can't see a situation where if you have something that needs to have a specific structural structure, if you were to bend it, you're changing the structure, you know? Yeah. Like that would like, uh, I think the structural color would be cool in fabric when you're just trying to have a whole bunch of different cool things going on. Yeah. But as far as making you invisible, no. That, that seems no. like... Isn't this the kind of stuff that's in peacock feathers, too? Yeah, exactly. So... Yeah. So peacock feathers... So the difference with um, the structural color that you see in the uh, beetles is that it's kind of that, like, stacking. Mm -hmm. We call it a booligan structure. Um, but in peacock feathers and in other feathers, it's actually like this little barb shape. Oh, like wow. A Christmas tree sort of shape. Yeah. And so what happens is the distance between each of those barbs. I'm not sure if it's the distance of like the whole tree shape or if it's like the distance of each different shape, like different like branch, I'll call it, is um, what's reflecting or if it's the whole thing. Uh, but not only like what is causing the iridescence is because like, uh, as the light, I don't know how well you guys see it. I wish it's, you could it's see okay. it. It's okay. It's okay. It's shiny. I'm so conscious about my beetle. Okay, but not only like the iridescence is also from like as the light is coming in and reflecting back out, it's bouncing off all of these different layers. Right. So it has this nice shininess to it. Right. Because uh, at some angles, it looks like like the sides are yellow, but if you turn it, that same side turns green when you turn yeah. it towards the camera or your eye. 
Yeah. So like on the back side of the beetle, you can definitely see like it's a lot more red. Oh, and so okay. That redness is probably due more to like the size of the pitch mm -hmm. than it is to um, the actual like, uh, what do you call it? The refraction. And it's also could be like, what happens is if these are sitting around my house and they're starting to absorb moisture from my environment, uh, they start to kind of swell. And so as they start swelling, the pitch starts increasing. And so if we're increasing the size, we're increasing the wavelength refracted. So remember, green is a lower wavelength than red. So right. that's why it starts to kind of move into the red color. Um, so it's cool that we can like control it. And a lot of things, so I have here my, they're these cellulose nanocrystals. Oh, this is they, what I there they are. Um, I don't know, you don't see what I see because the 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 computer just doesn't, or the, you know, the yeah. camera. Technology, oh my gosh, you saw Technology me. doesn't pick up stuff the Ooh. same way that our eyes do. Cameras don't pick up the light the same way our eyes do at all. Exactly, so these are like actually like really rainbowy and iridescent Ooh. and beautiful and I wish that you guys could see them. I try my best on my stream to like flash them up on screen so people could see what I actually see. But yeah, so they're also the same, very iridescent. I love it. It's really cool. It's fun. Those are the same particles you do paintings with, right? Yeah. So what do I you do have a painting paint handy? <laughs> I actually do. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. So while she's re uh, Honestly, recovering, then. I have to grab some. Come on. So Aww. you guys, don't don't be upset. These I was supposed to send away to my viewers, but I haven't sent everything yet. Um, so on my birthday, it's the I did holiday rush. Away. It's the holiday <laughs> rush. Yeah. So basically, what I have here um, is a whole sample. So what I was doing on Sundays is I was taking the nanoparticle mixtures Ooh. and I was mixing them with different plasticizers. So polyethylene glycol, uh, glycerol, and glucose, which is like basically just sugar. Right. Uh, and so what we the logic is is that if you take these plasticizers, they'll kind of fit themselves in between the crack or in between the different um, the different layers. And so when it's drying, it's no longer to fully compress. Mm -hmm. So they kind of have a raised pitch. So if you see the top one is the best example, my light might be too bright. You can see it goes from really blue to kind of like this goldish. Yeah. Pressure. So it's actually from my perspective, it's more of like a ready color. Um, so unfortunately, you guys don't see it as well. So it does work. Um, the problem, though, is a lot of it depends on the drying time. So you need your structures to be able to like reorient and kind of find each other to form that phase. And so what happens is if I'm just doing it in my apartment in an uncontrolled environment, is um, it's going to probably dry too quickly because it's winter time and the humidity is dropped. And also it's on paper, so uh, some of the moisture is going to get absorbed into the paper, which is going to make it dry even faster. So they don't exactly have uh, a lot of time to draw or dry. But so like some of the little things I've done is like paint sort of little. <gasps> That's These adorable. They're iridescent. Yeah. Um, it's, it is hard to see, but the, it's adorable. It was a Earl Meyer flask and a beaker next to each other yeah. with eyes and smiley faces for those who and missed so it. And so another one, um, so I've been learning about memes and stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Pepe. <laughs> what what is, did you call it? It's it's a Pepe, isn't it? Pepe Pepe okay. Lafrog. Interesting. Why? What do you call it? The Pepe -pee Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can That's we what I wrote adopt on the car. you? See, see. Can, can we adopt you? You're fabulous. It's it's Pepe, what? but it will forever be Pepe -pee to me forever. <laughs> I am always up for adoption. I'm sure my dad. So um, I'm one of those awful. So okay, backstory. I pretty much like failed out of high school because I was a very bad child growing up. Oh, no. So <laughs> I um I worked as like a flight attendant for several years and whatnot, and I finally saved money to go to university. And like I, in the back of the airplane, I was like doing my high school and stuff in like the back seats. You know when flight attendants are supposed to be working. Not me. I was like back there, kind of like lurking and like doing homework. Oh. Um, so uh, I was one of those. What do they call them? The people who like move back home when they're like adult children. So I basically uh, failed like, to launch or something. I don't know, but I came back, and so my dad was so excited 
to get rid of me, but I'm kind of sick of paying rent. So if one of you guys wants to adopt me, I would be forever grateful <laughs> if I could get to pay rent because what did someone say? A boomerang kid? A boomerang kid. Yeah, yes. boomerang kid. There you go. Yeah, they leave and then they come back. Yeah. So, yeah, as a PhD, I don't leave the lab much. Well, it's because it's pretty cheap rent and there's usually like free food working around. The usually. longer you're at university, the easier it is to like find free food because they love to give out like free pizzas if you come to this, free hot dogs if you come to this, you know, like there's tons of free food around campus. So the goal is to make sure you're always there so that you always get like the little emails in your inbox. You're like, um, oh, there's food. <laughs> I, I will go partake of this food. <laughs> yeah. Not gonna That's lie, like, anytime I was told there was food in the office, yeah, I was there. Uh, like, yeah, any PhD student is like that. Oh, it's another palindrome I'm seeing people. Are yeah, reading. yeah, pa Pamela really likes palindromes, especially oh, palindromic really? numbers. That's so funny. And and I think we have have we met the thing where where the audience gets to pick my hair color. Uh, no. So so when we know another thousand dollars is coming in in matching. So we're at essentially eight oh two two oh seven. Yeah, that it was at eight eight thousand. Oh, it was at eight thousand. I thought yep. it was at ten thousand. No. Okay. So slash pull that red versus purple. Somebody. Wait. What? <laughs> so what happened i missed it <laughs> at a certain we had like things that would unlock or things that would happen at certain donation amounts and the last hour before you came on um we had matching up to a thousand and i think we maxed out that one thousand so no, the exciting. thing at the bottom is off by a thousand and i had oh, said really? at eight thousand that the community could choose my hair color whether it's red or purple, and it has to be one of those two, and it cannot be both, because I... I don't dye my hair. Okay, is your, oh, I have to vote. Oh, no, ah, one second, I need to vote. No, ah. pink was not in the running. Somebody asked what your favorite uh, Pokemon is. My, uh, Gira, Gira Farig? Gira Farig? Wait, my favorite? Yeah, your favorite Pokemon. Are Pokemon still around? Yes, Pokemon Go. <laughs> I was just told to yell out Charmander. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. My I nephew would love it. you. My nephew would love you. That's all that matters. Okay. <laughs> I, so, um, Pokemon was popular when I was in, like, elementary school. Um, I'm moving with my age. <laughs> if favorite um, human were here, he he would agree. He knows yeah, way more um, about Pokemon than I do. I'm just like, I just play Pokemon Go. I don't even do that. There was that one, what is it, the catching one? Is that what Pokemon Go is? Yeah, that's Pokemon Go. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I never got into it. I I um I don't have any apps on my thing. Once I was I recently just got what is it called? Call of Duty Mobile. Yeah. And I so there's like this app where you can like game on it. And so my, what do you call it? The, I like somehow closed the screen, but my screen was still open. So everybody could see like the the desktop of my phone, the home screen of my phone. Yeah. And basically I thought, so there's an image of my husband on the back cuddling the dog. And I thought people would make comments about that. Yeah. yeah. No, they right away were like, ha ha, you have no apps, loser. <laughs> It's fine. It's course, fine. It's better with no apps. Yeah. It's better with I, no apps. I can't keep up with it. I barely have time. And then also, like, as you saw, I barely know how to do, like, a video conference. It's so. okay. You are a PhD student. I know you're freaking busy. <laughs> Technology. There's so much to learn. Oh, I don't know. I grew up right? with it. But it's, like, never ending. It is never my ending. My is way better than me. And he is, like, a fraction of my age. I have to say, <laughs> I'm quite jealous. Wait, I'm adding the match. Do not get excited. I missed. Oh. Is your vote done for your hair color? Hmm? Is the vote done for your hair color? No, I don't know. I don't know. I voted. Can I give you my honest opinion? Sure. I voted for red because, or no, 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 no. I voted for purple because it matches like the Twitch sort of. And your guys' logo is kind of purple. No? Our, our logo is kind of purple. 
Her color is kind of purple. I think that the poll's almost done. It looks like purple one. Nice. It looks like it's going to be purple. It looks like Pamela and I are going to have matching hair. Are you going to straight up like Kool-Aid dry it or dye it? Or uh, are you going to bleach it and then do like an ombre or like... So Pamela has this stuff called overtone, which she is now allergic to because... Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, it feels like Pamela's superpowers being allergic to the strangest things. Oh I love you, Pamela, but you are allergic <laughs> to the strangest things. I recognize this problem. So it's overtone. So it's like you put it in like a hair mask so I don't have to bleach my hair. It's just go put all this goop in my hair, let it sit, and then rinse it out. And that's that's it. It sounds like something I can do. I think so. Are know. you just gonna do half of it though? You said like just the bottom. Half? No, I'm just gonna do the whole thing. Oh, I'm just gonna do the whole thing. Very interesting. I know. Somebody's voting Beetlejuice red. <laughs> Beetlejuice red. Yeah. <laughs> if no pink, purple. Oh my goodness. Oh, is that your puppy? Yes, this is my Juno. She's my co-star. Oh. We approve of dogs. She's not as well behaved as your dogs, though. Like, your dogs will sit quietly. If I have food out in front of her, she just goes wild. She's <sighs> misbehaved. Tinker does not sit quietly. You must miss all the times that I've been, like, just throwing Cheerios at Tinker because she won't no, be quiet. No, but she's so much more calm. Like, <laughs> she's faking it right now because she's on medications because she injured herself. Um, but... With your dogs, like, at least they'll, like, sit and calm down for, like, a few seconds. Like, if food comes out, she is so, like, food aggressive that oh my. she can't control herself. Oh, my. Oh, my. Hey, Eddie. Look what I got. Come on. So, Eddie is... Oof! This is Eddie. This is Pamela's Australian Shepherd. Oh, my gosh. You, you are a big doge. and. And Malachi may or may not. Malachi wants a treat, but Malachi doesn't want to get on camera. <laughs> do you want? Do you want more treats, Eddie? Eddie's Eddie 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 Eddie. Sorry. He's see Eddie's like I'm just gonna go around where the treats are. Eddie Eddie Eddie, come here. Let's see. Look, Eddie. Malachi's like I really want it. Oh. <laughs> you are the big dumb dog I want someday. Me too. I you know, just watch out on the side of the road. You never know when the dumb, dumb dog is going to find you. I know, I know. Well, she was, our dog is a Mexican street dog type thing. And so... Hold I up, hold up. Mexican. You live in Canada. How do you have a Mexican street dog? My husband is Mexican. So okay, that makes sense. So he found this dog and brought it in. Okay. Um, which is just a puppy. Um, well, he didn't find it. Other people found it. And you know, the dog gets passed around and whatever else. So... Um, is the Mexican street dog a breed? I'm pretty sure. It's like, because it's like a mix of a mix of a mix. Right. It's so mixed that it's literally like its own breed. Oh. Um, so I got a dog with this like mentality like, oh no, all dogs are wonderful dogs and you can make all of them friendly and lovely. And it's like, no, some of them really have a temperament. <laughs> it's not as friendly as you would like. <laughs> so... I'm really working on her. Like, I take her out to uh, interact with other dogs as much as I can, but she's definitely like a human, human type of dog. Yeah, my dogs don't exactly play well with other dogs. In fact, Puck, Puck is um, special, and his body language will be mixed, so he'll be, like, wanting to play, but he'll have an aggressive stance. So other dogs <laughs> that can read body language are like, mm-mm, mm-mm, you're looking really? for a fight. Dogs that can't read body language, like Eddie, will just be like, let's play. Yeah. Wow. I know my dog, like, when she wants to play, she's really, like, vocal. So it, she sounds, like, super nasty. But. <laughs> oh, my puppy Stella is like that. S Stella, I, I occasionally have posted on YouTube because she'll be like, arr, 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 and sh she'll just talk and talk and talk until you throw something. And, and all of the dogs here have totally different personalities. What you haven't seen is that any time a man walks into the room, Malachi rumbles. Because Malachi is... All, all of my dogs are rescues. And Stella was rescued as a puppy, and Malachi was rescued after a year of awful. And, and so, um, yeah, he has opinions. He has opinions. He's just quiet if he's near me. Yeah. 
Yeah. Any... But that's the one you said you take to your uh, observatory? I, I, so Eddie goes everywhere with me. I don't actually have an observatory in, in, uh, when I, Wait, I don't Boston. know what the right words are. I'm really like, when it comes to like space speak, I am like. No, no, no. It's fine. So I may have told a story online about when I had a dog named Leah several years ago and she'd go to work with me and she'd sit up in the dome and um, she scared the bejesus out of a graduate student who thought he could use yeah. the observatory without asking uh, permission because he went to blithely open the door to the dome with a key he shouldn't have had and oh, was gosh. met by a 60 pound dog oh my gosh he Eat. ran he ran i was delighted he shouldn't have been there i didn't have to yell <laughs> at him it was good <laughs> yeah oh my gosh did you like see who it was were you able to like get the key back and everything i'm like looking at the wrong screen so it's okay Oh, no, it's, it's all good. Yeah, it's, it's, so I, I was totally able to, like, basically, you, stop! Um, oh. Bad dog voice came out, and um, he stopped, and he was like, I'm sorry. And, yeah, everything was put right. But it was just one of those things of, had I simply asked for the key, I'm sure you could have gotten a key from another graduate student. Yeah. But the 60-pound dog was definitely a deterrent. Yeah, man. Good dog. That's a good boy, we would say. I would say. But. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a very good dog. Very, very good dog. Yeah. All right. So I don't I don't even know where we're at hour-wise. I just know we're close to the top of the hour. So so, so we are... We are Sorry, I'm looming from the other side switch? of the table. Um, yeah, but I need to get my water. So I'm oh. going to leave you there for a moment more. Uh, we are... <laughs> Uh, ending hour 38, Fraser Kane, my co-host for Astronomy Cast, will be joining us momentarily. Um, in the meantime, we are going to purposefully run an ad this time. Um, reset the stream. Up the ads. What was that? You should double up on the ads. Make sure you get that revenue. Oh, I know. I know. I haven't figured out how to set that up yet because it like came out just as we were getting ready for the Hangout-a-thon. I didn't want to break anything. Um, so uh, we're going to run another ad. Oh, There's, oh, there's Fraser, Fraser joining Fraser. us now. Um, we're going to do a quick reset on the stream. And then we will be observing the night sky as we head into the night and round down on this Hangout-a-thon. Thank you so much, Amanda, for joining us. This this has been delightful in every possible way. Thank you for having me. Good luck on the rise goal. Oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> no, because I was like, can we have one girl, two beakers? Pamela's like, who's that? And I'm like, don't worry. You'll love her. So, yeah, I was right. Everybody loves you because you're awesome. All right. Thank, thank you so you much for it. joining us. Uh, we'll see you around. And, of yeah, course. everybody okay. go follow for more <laughs> Not any more cockroach craziness. <laughs> <laughs> Poor cockroach. Oh my gosh. All right. Okay. Bye. Okay. So, uh, can you run the ad? Yeah, I can run the ad. And then green button until it's gray, gray button until it's green. I will be right back. So, click okay. that to reset the stream. Well, hi, Fraser. You're muted. Turns out I am. All right. So Hello. People that are subscribed to the channel can see us right now. We're running a 60 second ad. After the ad runs, we're gonna drop the stream for a second, repick it, repick it back up, and then Pamela will be back and the lower third under my name will no longer be incorrect. So <laughs> Because it will be actually Pamela and not and not you. Yeah, and not me. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. So I saw something about maybe you have clouds. Do you have clouds? Oh, we got tons of clouds. Clouds and chance of rain and high winds. No, there's no observatory. <sighs> yeah. Okay, well. Amanda, how you've changed. Na I've been talking to Nancy all day about it and just the grim, uh, merciless weather that is uh, over top of uh, Southern California. So no, no. All right. Okay, so the ad is over, so I'm going to drop the stream for a second.